Let's create a method named two-dimensional array and let's define the two-dimensional array. The first thing we write when defining the integer two-dimensional array is the int keyword followed by open square brackets with a comma within the brackets. This indicates that we wish to define a two-dimensional array. So let's name this array student average grades per year. In this example, we are going to add the average yearly final grades for three students for each of the four years studied by the students. So the first dimension in the array denotes the number of years studied. These students have studied for four years. The second dimension represents individual students. This example is dealing with three students. So we are going to add a total of four multiplied by three elements to this array. We are then going to write the values of the elements in the array to the console screen. The data will be represented as a matrix. Each row represents a year studied. Each column represents a student. So let's populate all 12 values of the array. These are arbitrary values created for the purpose of this example. Let's speed up the process of populating the two-dimensional integer array to save time. As always, the code created for this tutorial can be downloaded from GitHub. Details of the location of where you can find the code for this tutorial is under the GitHub code section below in the description. Okay, let's create a method to sequentially output the values of any two-dimensional array that stores integer values to the console screen as a matrix. We have an outer and an inner loop in this method. The outer loop traverses the first dimension of the array. The inner nested loop traverses the second dimension of the array. So basically the code reads as, for each of the four years studied, output the yearly average grade for three specific students. Please note that we are using the getLength method, which belongs to the array abstract class, to retrieve the number of elements stored in the appropriate dimensions for our array. Remember, all arrays in C-sharp inherit from the array abstract class. An integer parameter gets passed into the getLength method. The value of zero that is passed into the getLength method for the Boolean expression in the outer loop denotes the first dimension, and a value of one that is passed into the getLength method for the Boolean expression in the inner loop denotes the second dimension. So in this example, the outer loop will loop four times and the inner loop will loop three times for each of the outer loop iterations. Within the inner loop, code to write the array values to the console screen is implemented. Each array element is indexed appropriately, i.e. the outer loop x counter variable indexes the first dimension and the inner nested loop's y counter variable indexes the second dimension of the two-dimensional integer array. Let's run the code. And as you can see, we have a matrix represented on the console screen. The rows represent the years studied, the columns represent the students. So you can see student one scored an average grade of 54% in the student's first year of study. Student 3 scored an average grade of 82% in the student's fourth year or final year of study. Student 2 scored an average grade of 67% in the student's second year of study. Okay, let's look at an example of a three-dimensional array. So this example is similar to the two-dimensional array example. We are going to store and display average yearly grades of three students, but the difference is we are going to split the data up into another dimension. So in this example, the third dimension relates to the students. The second dimension relates to the years studied. And the first dimension relates to the courses studied. So let's define our array. This time, the int keyword will be followed by square brackets containing two commas. This indicates that we are defining a three-dimensional array. Let's call this array student average grades per year per course. Now let's define the size of each dimension. Remember we have to fix the length for an array at the point at which the array is defined. So the first dimension will have a length of two, denoting two courses that the student studied. The second dimension will have a length of four, denoting the number of years the student spent studying. And the length of the third dimension will be three, denoting the number of students included in this example. Two multiplied by four multiplied by three. So this array will contain 24 elements. Right, let's populate the data for this array. And let's fast forward through this rather laborious process.
Okay, we have now written the code to populate the data for the array. Let's write the code to sequentially write the values stored in any three-dimensional integer array to the console screen. So this code is very similar to the code writing the two-dimensional integer array to the console screen. The main difference being that we have added another outer loop. And we of course need to include an index for our third dimension when writing the values of our array to the console screen. In the interests of better formatting, I've included a dashed line to divide the results of the first course from the results of the second course. Right, let's run the code. The first matrix represents data for the first course that the student studied. The second matrix represents data for the second course that the student studied. Let's look at some of the results. So, student 3 scored a result of 88% in the student's final year, i.e. year 4, of course 1. The same student scored a result of 85% in the student's final year, i.e. year 4, of course 2. Student 2 scored 67% for the student's second year, for course 1. Student 1 scored 64% for the student's third year for course 2. Please find the details of where you can download the code examples demonstrated in this tutorial below in the description. These details can be found under the GitHub code section. If you feel you have gained value from viewing this tutorial, please consider giving it a thumbs up. It will be greatly appreciated. And please subscribe to support the channel. If you are already subscribed, Please smash the bell icon to be notified of future content, which will be coming soon. Please feel free to engage with me in the comments section. Thank you.